Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping in today. Today I have a little different type of video, no unboxing, nothing like that. I saw a few others do this and I thought I would do this because a lot of you in my Q&A questions asked specific YouTube questions and I figured this is perfect. This is, and I have it written down in front of me so I get this correct, this is a hashtag creator tag for YouTube. So it, it can, it pertains all to YouTube. I um, know that the creators of the tag are uh, Kate the Great and Better Off Red. They are the creators. So thank you for creating this. I will leave links to their channels down below. I saw this on Makeup Molly. I love watching her. I will also link her channel down below if you'd like to go see their answers or if you're looking just for more channels to watch. So I do have all the questions written down so that I could answer them because I thought there's 17 questions. I'm going to move quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on anyone because I might spend a little bit more time on my Q&A, which I'll probably film this week sometime. So let's get right in. Number one is, how do you feel about the term influencer and do you feel you are one? Um... I guess the answer to that is yes, I, I do, but not like an influencer like some of these big influencers. I consider like more like a micro influencer. You know, I have a small channel. I don't have 100,000 subscribers or a million subscribers like the Makeup Molly who is, you know, 40 or 45,000 subscribers or Kelly Strack who's almost at a million. Like they're influencers. Um, I consider myself a micro influencer. I do bring a lot of products to the channel and give opinions, show you products that I've used. Do I like them? Do I not? So I don't know. I mean, I hope that like, I know I'm trustworthy. I'm honest. If I don't like something I say, I don't like it. Um, and that does help when you're looking for an opinion of somebody else whether you should make a purchase or not, whether you join a box or not. So um, I think honesty and trustworthiness is so important if you want to be a creator so that people who view you see that and then trust your opinion. If you love something, um, fine, then they'll you have to be believable. You can't put on airs or try to, um, you know, can't love everything. And I don't, and I do say that. So the next question is, how did you decide to become a, a content creator? And I do, like, I agree with Molly when she said this. I prefer to be known as a content creator because that's what I do. I create content for YouTube. Um, basically, I watched YouTube for years before I even thought about doing anything on YouTube. And it wasn't necessarily beauty that I was watching. Um, I am an acrylic artist. So I was watching many art channels um, in colored pencils, charcoal, um, I'm trying to think what else, pastels, obviously acrylic paint, um, not oil or anything like that. I've only worked with oils once and it's beautiful, but it's so much work. I don't have that much patience for oil. Um, so I was following a lot of artists uh, from beginner to professional to up my game in painting. And probably for a couple of years, that's what I was watching. And then I started to dabble a little bit more into the beauty world, not necessarily unboxing, more beauty. So I was watching Tati and um, I was watching Makeup Molly. I was watching Kelly Stract and, you know, when they were smaller channels. And um, when I started to think about unboxings, uh, it's when I started watching Abadabs, Abby from Abadabs and Just Anne. And channels of that nature to, you know, I can do this too if I start and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But if you don't start something, you'll never know if it's a, if you'll succeed or if you would fail. So you just have to throw caution to the wind and just do it. And if one, you don't like it, it's too time consuming, it's not for you, then you stop. There's no harm in that. Um, but what about if you love it? And that's what happened to me. I absolutely love it and basically started an unboxing channel. But like I said, if you don't try, you'll never know. So if you're thinking about it, just do it. Um, you know, just be consistent if you upload. That is so, so important, being consistent. 
Um, the next question is, what's your experience with knowing other creators in life, good or bad? I don't know anybody in real life. I've never met another creator. I have, you know, DM'd back and forth with a few of them in the past, not so much recently. Um, and that's always nice, but that's not a true get to know you. Um, I was going to go to an Ipsy event in New York because that's not it's about two hours for me. But I found out about the event, like, not enough time. And I would have gone because New York is easy for me to, to drive to the train and take the train into the city. Um, so I don't know anybody in real life. Um, it would be nice to meet some people that I follow that are local, like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. It'd be nice to meet them maybe one day in an event. I will. You never know. Um, so let's see. Then... Question number four, do you accept sponsorships and how do you feel about them? Yes, I do. I have in the past. I haven't recently. I'm fine with them. Um, you just have to state that that's what you're doing. I think being honest, once again, and trustworthy with your viewer to let them know if it's a sponsorship, a paid, you know, because people might look, I mean, I know I look differently at a paid um, sponsorship video because are they being truthful? But I have a small core of channels that I do watch that I know are truthful. I mean, do I know a thousand percent? No, but I trust them enough that they're being honest because they say they don't like it, whether they're getting paid for it or not. So that's how I know that I can trust them. Um, I think it's awesome if, if you know, you can do that. Be careful what you accept. I still see channels even at like, 40, 50,000, 30,000 subscribers, accepting whether it's collabs or sponsorships or working with however you want to word that with companies that they should not, they don't, whether they didn't investigate more about them. Um, you know, I don't know, but before I commit, I go search. I look on YouTube to see what other creators are saying about it. I go look at their page, see is find as much information as I can. And I go out on Google and search it up and see. And I have said no to many companies because I just didn't get a good vibe. And I think you have to be careful um, because you can get in trouble on YouTube with certain collabs and working with since, you know, maybe not sponsorships per se, um, but you can get in trouble because it's content that you should not be putting on YouTube. Um, so, if you're offered a sponsorship and you're starting out, that's wonderful. Just be careful. Know as much as you can about the company, the people you're working with. Be careful with contracts if they ask you to sign a contract. Make sure you read that contract inside and out, upwards, downwards, backwards, frontwards, because there's all could always be something in there that could bind you that you're not aware of. Also be weary of companies, and I'll just say weary, that want to use your content. Um, I don't generally <clears throat> give anyone permission to use my content. It's mine. I have created it. Now, if I'm being paid and they ask to use my content, I don't have a problem with it. But I also want to know what you're using and for how long you want to use it. Um, because that's important. You don't want somebody using your content forever when you've been paid, let's say, $100 $200, $300, is it worth your content being put out there for years? And that's all you were paid up front. So be careful with that. Um, and if you're just doing, and there's nothing wrong with doing, um, making videos and doing reviews and sharing product for free product, you know, smaller channels, sometimes that's what you have to do. Um, but be careful with them wanting to reuse your content. They've just given you a free $20 product and they want your product, your video to use for their advertising, but they're not paying for that advertising. They're just giving you a product. So just be mindful of that. You know, if you say yes, you want to know what are they using your entire video, just portions. And is it going to be for a month, for six months, for a year? Because if that be the case, then you should be compensated for that. So just always be careful with that. Um, and I know other content creators would agree to that. Uh, number five, have you ever, 
have you had an experience with a brand that left a bad taste in your mouth? No, I have not. But I'm very careful who I accept product from. Um, I do reviews for Amazon, but they don't make my YouTube channel majority of times unless I agree to make a video. Um, but I'm still careful with that. I don't accept a product that I will not physically use in my, in my own personal life. I'm not just going to be write a review and never have used the product. That's not right. Um, so I would say no. Um, number six is how do you deal with negative comments? Um, I don't skip right past them. I might just heart them. Yes, I've, my eye is teary today. You know, I read them. Depending on the level of negative comment, it will get deleted and somebody will get blocked. I do have people that, um, I don't know how to word this, that think they own the channel and uh, that gets frustrating. So it's not necessarily negative comments, but, um, you know, so that is troublesome sometimes. Um, I have never blocked a viewer ever, ever, ever. Trolls, yes, I block them all the time because I'm not interested in your comments. Um, just real fast on the comment section, um, now with the unbox it um, hashtag, your comments are automatically held for a review because hashtags and links I don't approve to be posted on my in my comment section. So I have to physically go in and release all those comments. So if you don't see your comment appear right away, it's not that you've been blocked or you don't need to retype the comment two or three times. It will eventually show up. I only do that maybe two, three times a day, go in and release it. And sometimes that's a good thing. It's a hassle for me, but it's better because then I could just scan your comment. And if, if I see you comment all the time, I'm just going to automatically approve it. But I've had to, um, you know, block a few trolls because, you know, they're going to try no matter what you do. So, um, they, they really don't bother me. I know initially, you know, when you're starting out, you know, negative comments can hurt your feelings. You know, you just got to have tough skin. You got the thick skin. Just don't let it bother you. Um, you know, if it's a personal attack, the best thing a creator has is the block button, the delete button. Just keep on removing them, block them. Um, you know, if they're nasty, nasty, report them to YouTube. Um, but you really do have to have thicker skin, um, in general to do YouTube. If you're super sensitive, don't do YouTube. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, but don't let them comments bother you. Truly don't. Um, no, I know it's easy for me to say, but you know, in the very beginning, getting your first thumbs down breaks your heart, but you know, the people are going to give you a thumbs down just for the sake of giving you one. So don't let that bother you too much. Um, What's you, number seven is what's your biggest pet peeve when it comes to comments? Um, I hit that on a little bit. Like people, there's nothing wrong with being a part of, you know, the comments in the community that we have here. Um, but always be respectful and remember that it's the creator's channel, not yours. Um, so I have, you know, have seen that happen a little bit. Um, Responding to other people's comments is kind of a pet peeve to me only when it's something that you should not be responding to. If somebody says, oh, I missed um, the color of that eyeshadow single and somebody else comments, oh, it was teal blue, that does not bother me because you're being helpful. But when it's a comment that, re that I should be answering because it pertains to my channel, then no, you should not be answering it being definitive in your in your response and saying that so and so is already subscribed well you don't know that because you can't see who is subscribed to my channel or who I subscribe to so those kinds of responses irk me a little bit and they will get deleted because you really should not be responding to those so it's basically um being helpful is one thing. Overstepping your boundaries is another. Um, there's a place and time for comments, but not channel related responses. Um, you know, if somebody puts in a comment, oh, how many days a week do you post? You know, yeah, you can say six days a week. That That's not necessarily anything that's going to offend me. It's um, questions that you don't have 100% the answer to. 
if, if you under, can understand that a little bit. So um, I would never go into somebody else's comments and post a comment that pertain to their channel. Let them answer it. If they don't choose to do their comments, that's their business and their viewers not getting an answer. But I'm not going to step in and, and answer for any other creator. And you guys should not either. Um, number eight is um, what is your favorite part of being a YouTube uh, content creator? Honestly, is the comments, is all the viewers, is getting to know all of you. And I have over the years. Um, you do find out little tidbits where people live, you know, their family life. Oh, big storms coming through and, you know, illnesses and weddings and babies. That's so nice to, to hear. Um, it's the only connection we have is in the comments. So I read all my comments. I respond to all my comments. You know, and I've said this before. I know at some point it becomes impossible to do that. But for as long as it is possible, I will always be the one responding. I don't have anybody else responding to my comments whatsoever. Um, I love what I do and answering comments is part of the responsibility. And I see these channels that aren't even at a thousand subscribers yet that don't respond to comments. It's a bad habit to start out with. And once you get behind, it is hard to catch up. I have fallen behind from injury or illness and I make an effort to catch it up and respond to all my comments. And I always respond personally. It's never a copy and paste answer, if you know what I mean. And I don't care if that's what cre other creators do. My concern is not what other creators do. Um, my concern is what I do and how I respond to my viewers and, and the friends that I have here on YouTube. So um, all of you in my comments and just learning so much about everyone because we all lead different lives. We live in different countries, different states here in the U.S. So, you know, our experiences are different. Um, number nine is what is your least favorite part of being a content creator? And I'm going to say my least favorite thing is YouTube. I wish they would just take a step back and leave us be creators. I understand they have to have control over our content so that we're not just out there willy nilly posting anything we want. Yeah, I get that. Um, I wish they would just let us create grow our channels and stay out of it to an extent, if that makes sense. And I mean, um, yes, I understand there's going to be restrictions on content because they have to, they have to keep it a safe environment. Um, but you know, as a small creator or really for any creator, you know, you, you work hard and you get new subscribers and then YouTube pulls them away from you until one, they can be verified that they've subscribed and you wind up within a week's time, a couple days, you get them back, but it's so frustrating to see you work so hard and then YouTube takes away four or five and then in a few days later they give them back and then you get five or ten more subscribers and YouTube drops them and it's just aggravating to see that happen and um, that's probably my most um, least favorite part is YouTube just constantly being in your business. I mean, I get it to an extent, but I don't get it to a full extent. Um, number 10, right? Is that where we're at? Yes, number 10. Do you edit your own content? And if so, do you enjoy it? Yes, yes, and yes, and I love it. I use two different editing programs because certain videos I have to edit a lot differently, like try-ons because there's more clips. When I do my unboxings, I don't edit... 99.9% .9 of the actual unboxing because I want what you see to be my initial reaction to a box and to products. Yeah, if I make a mistake or the doorbell rings or, you know, the dog's barking uncontrollably, you know, sometimes one little single bark or two I'll let slip. Um, so then I have to stop, read, start over or edit that out. So I, but for the most part, my actual physical unboxing is not edited at all. Um, but like clothing try-ons, you know, it's a stop and start and change clothes and reset and like my bully make box, things like that. They're edited differently, but the actual unboxings of those is not touched. It's a one take through. If I make a mistake, I'll make a mistake. Um, but I love to edit. I think it's so much fun. I have a lot to learn still in editing, but I also don't think 
that what we do as beauty channels or unboxing channels, your editing needs to be overdone. To me, that just takes away from what you're sharing. I find it annoying, like if it's a constant pop-up, pop-up, pop-up. I lose sight of what I'm supposed to be watching. My focus is now on what you're popping up instead of what you're saying or showing. Um, I just don't feel they should be over edited. That's my own opinion. Don't come for me. Uh, and I don't over edit because I don't feel it's necessary. Yes, if you're vlogging or if you're, you know, out doing camping videos and things like that. Yeah, they have to be edited differently. Um, but they can be overdone too. So I don't like anything that's over edited. It's just not necessary. You're not creating a movie. Uh, my opinion. Next question, which is 11, where do you draw the line in regards to sharing on social media? Well, we all know social media has positive and negative sides. Um, and I don't overshare my personal life. I share probably very little of my personal life. It, it's just not necessary. I don't, I, you know, if I had a, another channel that was a vlog channel uh, maybe, but I just don't find it necessary. I, see, I have seen many channels um, bring on trouble by sharing too much. Um, and it's too much for them to handle, which I understand. Um, that's why I don't do lives. Uh, you just invite trouble. Person, me personally, I, I, I just, I'm not going to say I'm never going to do a live, but I can probably almost say that I won't be doing lives. Um, and I just... I don't mind sharing a little bit here and there, but for the most part, no, the majority of my personal life is that personal. And I like it that way. And um, that's why I like when, for my birthday card club, do not share your birth year. It's not necessary. And you don't even need to share your day. Just say beginning of February, beginning of April. This way I know when to mail a card out. Um, you don't, don't tell me that you're April 7th, 1972. Keep that information private. That needs to, because that is a lot of information that you're giving out. Don't share that. And I say that every time. Don't give everything out. Um, I think social media is a decent balance. And, um, but I see a lot on there I don't like and I don't agree with. So I pretty much just keep quiet. It's not necessary for me. Number 12, name one thing you wish you knew when you were starting out. Hmm. One thing I wish I would have started out on camera. I just um, didn't know if I was going to continue to do it. I filmed a lot at, late at night and I didn't want to have to have hair done, makeup done, stay fully dressed. And um, I did at that point watch, I think it's Subscription Box Mom, I think is her channel. She never is on camera. And I thought, well, I could do that. I can stand behind the camera and still film and show, show the box because I still think what you're showing is way more important than what I look like or what I'm wearing um, because it's all about the product and the brand, in my opinion, not about me. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just the presenter. But um, I wish I would have started out on camera from the very beginning because I grew faster once I came in front of the camera. So um, that is one lesson that I've learned and I would share um, with anybody. You know, yeah, if you're unsure, starting behind the camera is not necessarily a bad thing, but don't spend as much time as I did behind the camera. Number 13, is there any change you'd like to make to your content in the future? I'm going to say no. I'm going to continue on the path that I am. It's working for me. Um, I would like to do more get ready with me's, um, share more of my favorite products, which I will do each month now products from the previous month that I tried, whether I like, didn't like, um, do like my favorite skincare, my favorite makeup, but you can't do too many of them. Um, I might redo like a handbag collection. Um, I also might put up um, like in the handbag collection and actually sell them. I have way too many handbags and I don't use them and they're, they are new or like new. So I might do something like that. So I am curious if that's something you would be interested in. Um, but I pretty much am happy with the path that I have taken and that I am on. Um, 
not to say that I'm not going to make little changes here or there to see if it helps me. If it's better for you guys, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, change is always good. And I know change is difficult for some people. Not necessarily for me. I'm okay with it. Um, next question. What company or collab is your dream? I'm going to say, um, I have all the questions written down, by the way. Uh, ColourPop. I love ColourPop. Um, I just think they're a phenomenal company. I never see anything negative about ColourPop. I mean, you do see negatives about some of these other companies. Uh, never ColourPop. I think they have a wide range of variety from A to Z, skincare, makeup, you name it, they have it. And um, I just think their products are good in general. So I think they would be a dream company to work with or do a collab with would be ColourPop. Um, number 15 is what other creator do you admire or want to work with? I'm going to agree with Makeup Molly on this one. She had said she admires any um, person who is a creator because it is a lot of work and it is, you know, you have to be committed to doing it and it takes time. It's not a two hour a week thing unless that's what you make it, but you also, what you put in is what you get back and more. So I admire anyone who has a channel, starts a channel and is out there working hard to grow their channel and reach their own milestones, is putting out good content, you know, kudos to you, really. I mean, it's not easy to, to be a creator. Um, but when it comes time, what was the part of the question to meet? Want to work with? I mean, I love Makeup Molly. I think she is very down to earth, just a sweet, sweet lady, woman. I mean, I'm not going to call her a girl. She's young. She's a new mom. She has a couple kids, I think, two children now. I believe two or she just have one she might have two I, I, I think she has two children I'm sorry I'm confusing with somebody else so I would love to work with her and she's um you know she's in the U.S. I'm not going to tell you where she is because I don't know if she lets people know where she is I mean I know what state she lives in she's um not too far but I would love to work with her I think she does awesome videos very down to earth very honest if something's not working she tells you and I would love to work with Kelly Strack I love Kelly from watching her, I can't even begin to tell you how long. Probably from the very beginning. I watched Makeup Molly from the beginning, too. Um, Kelly's a little bit closer for me. She's in New Jersey. She does say that all the time. She would be a lot easier to work with. She probably wouldn't work with a small channel anyway. I mean, she's almost at a million subs. She's like 930,000. Um, and I get that. I mean, and that's not to say anything against her. I mean, she's going to work with brands and bigger influencers. I'm good with that. But I, if, if it's a dream, who would I love to work with? Those are the two people I would love to work with. Um, number 16, what kind of content do you hate? Oy. Well, drama. Or people that insert themselves in drama and make a video just for the views and the clicks. Like, no, I, that's ridiculous. Um, making a video solely for the views. And you can tell when, when creators do this. They'll pull from old videos and make a montage and air it because they don't have any content. Well, how about you just don't post any content? Like, I find that frustrating. I watched your original video. And let's say you're making something. Because you have nothing for the next week or two. You're going back to old videos, pulling out them sections, re-editing and uploading. Uh, no, that's you're just grabbing for views and... and I'm sorry. And you know what? If that's what you're doing, like I said, it's your channel. You do you. I don't like that and I won't watch it. And I will literally leave a channel and never watch again, uh, seeing too much of that. The drama, uh, you know, um, I'll peace out in a second. Um, I, I, I don't like clickbait thumbnails. Uh, you know, this is horrible. This is the worst ever. And then you watch the video and they love everything that they got. No, you, you lose me. Um, it's not necessary to be confident in your video that you make and not to have to do that. And it's all for clicks and views, you know, and I'm sorry. And I don't roll like that. Um, another thing that I, um, content that I hate, and it said hate in the question, content you hate. And it's not necessary. And it is part content, part creator, creators that think they know it all. Nobody knows it all. 
None of us are perfect. So, um, but I catch every once in a while, you know, videos right they're recommended and I click on them and watch them. And okay, you know, why not? It might be someone. And you, it's just, I can't even explain what I mean, but they think they know it all. They have all the answers. None of us do. It's called life. And that's a turnoff for me. Um, I just don't like it at all in general, in my personal life or on YouTube. So you'll lose me uh, every time. Um, and that was number 16. So what's 17? Have you ever had to deal with cancel culture? And if so, how? No, I have not, thankfully. And not thankfully because it's intentional. Um, I am always mindful of my thoughts and my words. And they pretty much match for the most part. Um, and I'm not just going to come out and say stuff that is hurtful or intentionally to hurt someone's feelings. It's just not necessary. I just, I, I don't find it necessary. Um, this whole cancel culture thing. I don't know how I really feel about that. People always need to be held accountable if they've done something to a group of people or to one individual. Yes, they need to be held accountable. Um, if, if it's the first time that they've messed up and slipped up, you know, and they truly apologize, you know, should that be enough? You know, maybe you can always, you should always forgive. Do you have to forget? No, but you should always have forgiveness in your heart. But, um, you know, consistent pattern of behavior. Yeah. That's a little less forgivable because that's then who they are as a person. Um, but, um, you know, I'm not perfect, so I'm not here to judge anyone nor should anyone be, ju be judging me because they're not perfect. Um, but that's a hard thing because cancel culture is such a big part of how social media is. And um, so just, you know, always be mindful of, you know, what you say, could this hurt someone's feelings? And it's always going to be yes, because somebody's going to feel a certain kind of way. So then don't post it. It's just, is it necessary? Is it, if it's something you are strongly about, I mean, not, I'm not talking about a cause, um, like abuse or neglect or anything like that. Yes. If you, you're strong in your convictions about that, yeah, absolutely post about it because you know, the majority will agree with you. Yeah. There's going to be some that are not, but, and I'm just talking about conversation, you know, be careful. Um, and when it comes along with that also, you know, be careful when you're talking to people and text messages, you know, be careful what you say, because it could always be screenshotted and used against you. So just always be mindful, you know, back in my day, social media didn't exist. There was no, you know, computers were just rolling out and there were no cell phones and text messages and emails and all that good stuff. I mean, we had AOL, I mean, come on. Um, so, um, you know, when computers came out there, it's just not, the technology is not the same. And 10, 20 years from now, technology is going to be so different than it is today. So always be mindful of what you say to people in text messages because words can cut people and can hurt. And it might not be because they can't hear how you say those words. So if they're in a bad place, they're going to take it negatively where that's not how you meant it. But if they're in a good place, they might take it positively because that's it. So it really depends. There's too many factors that go into it. So always be mindful that of others' feelings. How would you feel if somebody said that to you? You know, it's just, um, you know, you just have to really be careful what you say in life and on social media. And that includes YouTube. Um, you know, I try my best. I am human. I can slip up, but, um, a little bit joy of editing. If you do, um, you know, I even try not to, you know, say certain words and, are they a part of my vocabulary in real life? Sometimes yes, but on here, I try to omit that because it's not necessary. Um, you know, I've said darn and heck, yeah, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But one video I slipped and I said, you know, what the, H-E-L-L, -L, you know, I said, what the hell? And I edited that out and re just redid that because it, it wasn't necessary for the video. I just was annoyed with the box and the product. And I was like, what the hell? But I edited that out. I mean, is it a bad thing? No. I say that in my real life. But it, I just didn't find it necessary when I edited. So I just real quick redid that section and 
used to, I said, what the heck? Um, so, you know, but I usually catch myself right away and just repeat it. And I think I've done that once or twice in all these years. So, um, I just don't find profanity necessary. Um, my opinion, if that's how you talk, that's how you talk. I watch videos and every other word is this or that. And it's a turn off. It's, it's not necessary. I am not saying I don't say those words because I do. But not every day. And it's not in my normal conversation. If I'm angry, oh, it's coming out. The Philly girl's coming out in me for sure. I can cut you with words and don't even, even have to. I could be 20 feet from you. Um, I don't like to do that. You know, back in my day, though. Oof. Yeah, trouble. Uh, I like to think I have grown as a person that I am more tolerant, which I know I am. I have way more patience than I did when I was younger. You know. I let a lot of stuff roll off my back. Um, things that I don't, I do harbor sometimes, and that's never good. But a lot of times, you know, I, I let it out eventually. And sometimes it's in a blow up, but it is what it is. You know, like I said, I'm not perfect, so I'm not here to judge anyone else. Um, I run my YouTube channel. I stay in my, I'm driving my car. I stay in my lane. I'm aware of what's going on over here and what's going on over here. I glance, yeah, I glance, I look in my rear view mirror, I see what's going on behind me, but I keep my focus in front of me. I can't change what's behind me, but I can correct mistakes or make things better in the future. So I just stay in my lane, keep forward, always be aware of what's going on around you because you have to. And um, I just focus on what I want to do here. I don't focus on what they're doing, how many subs they have that I, I you know, good for them. I focus on me and what I'm doing and all of you. So I hope you enjoyed this little creator tag. Um, and I hope it answered quite a few of the questions that I did see for my Q&A. I will briefly touch on them when, the, when I film the Q&A. But I figured this was great to just do a deeper dive into the YouTube side. Um, I still love what I do three years later. And um, the day that I stop loving it is the day that I'll stop. That's all I can say. I love to film. I love to edit. I, you know, I love doing my comments. It is very time consuming, especially since I am a full-time creator. If I did one video a week, yeah, it would, wouldn't be that bad, but I produce six a week and maybe seven if there's a giveaway winner. So, and it's consistent every week, every week, every week. So it is a lot of work and I still have a personal life. So, but I, like I said, I still love it. I hope you enjoy watching. Um, thanks for sticking through to all 17 questions if you made it all through till the end um if you have a channel feel free to use this this is a great um thing to do to share with your viewer i think big thank you to makeup molly and kate the great and better off red for bringing this to my attention i thought this was a great one to make have a great day everyone and i'll catch you all in my next video bye bye now